Nice. What's going on, guys? It's Giant Nomad. You know who it is. Man, it is Super Bowl Sunday. I live in Atlanta. And guess where the Super Bowl is at? It is here. That's right. Super crazy right now. Super busy. But some things have transpired. If you guys haven't heard, Little Bow Wow was arrested in Atlanta for having a situation with one, his girl, I'm assuming. And his face was pretty scratched up. You know what I'm saying? And of course, I went to Twitter. And the Twitter heads over there were like, you know, um, I guess he can't fight or whatever and things like that. But it's a double-edged sword, right? So if he, if he beats his woman, he's a, he's a punk. He's not a man. If he doesn't do anything, he'd lost. He's a sucker anyway, right? So it's, it's, it's kind of ludicrous to really even comment on a situation you don't know about. But at the end of the day, why am I even talking about this? I'm not a gossiper. I'm really not. I'm not even trying to be. But this point of celebrity, right, of being a celebrity for so long because he was, you know, he was a child rapper, which there aren't really many of that can say that, right, that they literally grew up in the game. And I'm sure certain things have 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 gotten him hyped up, of course, because money, fame. You know, I'm sure he's had a lot of women, you know what I'm saying? But not controlling your destiny and falling off. I At least I think he fell off. If, if I'm wrong, you let me know. Um, I've never really been a big fan of his music, but I respect everyone's music, though, you know what I'm saying? And for him to come out here in, in Atlanta, which I'm sure he has a place out here already, um, it's... It's, it's a little insane. At like 4 o'clock in the morning, cops are arresting two people. And the cops said, one of the articles in the AJC, which is Atlanta General Constitution, which is our main paper here, and said that the cops arrested both of them because they didn't know who started it. They couldn't, they couldn't tell. <laughs> so, you know, Bawa said it was her, that she assaulted him. And, and then she said Bawa assaulted her. So since they both had marks in their face and things of that nature, or bruises, that the cops said, you know what, we're going to just take you both in because we can't figure this out right now. And um, they did. Now, whatever comes out of it, I guess we're going to have to wait and see. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, after that, we got 6 9 who um, Twitter right now is in a rage, calling him a snitch. You know what I'm saying? Um, that uh, right now I know TMZ is stating... That well, his baby mom's, his baby mom saying that um because Takashi six nine snitched, um he's putting, you know he puts his family in harm's way, you know he has a three year old daughter, and um and his his ex girlfriend uh Sarah Molina, you know um went to TMZ Live, um and kind of told him that hey you know after him spilling the beans to the feds. About how and why he got into the nine trade bloods, and also the names of other gang members allegedly involved in the slew of crimes. This is what I'm reading off of uh, TMZ. As Sarah says, Takashi left behind yet another mess for her to clean up, but she's especially worried because she believes little Saraya, I'm sorry if I pronounced her name wrong, is in danger. Sarah says she'll protect her family at all costs, even if it means keeping Saraya away from her dad. She makes no bones about it. She won't allow Takashi's baggage near her daughter, and you know, and she's right. You know, you can't, you can't let things happen like that. You know, if Takashi decided to snitch, he decided to. I'm not sure if snitch is the right word though, because you know he 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 his back was in the corner. He was getting 47 years, so he won't get sentenced until January of next year. Um, that's when he'll get his sentencing. Don't think it'll be 47 years. It may be 15. 10, maybe 20 years, you know what I'm saying? I think it's going to get a significant cut. Um, but he's not going to be up for the 47 years because he cooperated with the feds. But then what does that mean for his music? What does that mean for him when he does come out? You know, will people be waiting for him? You know, 15, 20 years later, 10 years later, you know. And if people are waiting for him, what's going to happen to him and his family, you know, for sure. And of course, what happens to his music, what happens to his fan base? You know, at that point, his fan base is going to be all grown up, right? Like, going to be moved on musically 10 years a decade later you know would definitely probably be moved on musically you know sonically in hip-hop as we show that we have already you know every decade or so sonically hip-hop just changes so what happens to an artist like that you know so and then of course the music that he's made he has you no know, 
Trey Ray, you know, written all over it. So he's going to have to make some adjustments of that as well. But, you know, what can you really do with that? And if he a snitch, hey, I guess he felt like he had to do what he had to do for himself. I guess he didn't want to spend 47 years because he would have been like 70 if he would have came out after 47 years. Like, who would he want to spend that life in jail? You know what I'm saying? So that's up to you guys to determine whether you would have snitched or not. I could really give two shits about uh, that shit. You know what I'm saying? But he also has to make sure that his family was taken care of before he started doing those things. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going to snitch out, make sure your family is okay, a thousand percent. You know what I'm saying? The other thing is about, I really didn't cover, which happened last week, was about um, Jesse Somlet, you know, the actor from Empire, um, that he, he got assaulted in Chicago, which was crazy. You know what I'm saying? I posted something on um, an IG, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, uh, you know, we got to support everyone like that. Like, you can't just go with this hate, hate crimes, and, and it's just not the move. You know what I'm saying? If you don't like people and you're surrounded by people you don't like, guess what? Why don't you fucking move? Why don't you fucking get away? Start your own island somewhere where you just want to be by yourself and and not be around real people. You know, it's, it's insane to me that this is still happening in 2020, but it goes to show you how unengaged, unwilling people are willing to talk about what's going on. You know, right now, I think this is probably the most volatile time that. I've seen in my years, not to say that the 70s didn't come with Vietnam or past that with with the civil rights movement. You know, I think every generation has their volatile time. And this is ours to where people are coming out, you know, out of the woodwork, which is fantastic, you know, about what you are, who you are, who you want to be. It's a certain sense of freedom with that. And that comes with responsibility. That comes with people backing each other up. That's also getting allies within that other party, whatever that party may be. And having allies is what helps the movement go forward. It just does. You know what I'm saying? So look into that, man. Like, really see who you can be an ally with and uh, and go forth with that. Now, this is something really crazy. My kids put me onto this. And yesterday, my um, my daughter and my son... My son, who is 19 years old, my daughter, who is 10, sat at home together and watched a concert in a video game. That's right. It was um, Fortnite, <clears throat> and they had um, Marshmallow, an official collaboration, purchasable skin, and merchandise line before you pay uh, Block Boy JB or 2 milli for stealing their dances. Sounds about right. Um, this is what I'm reading off of Twitter um, from uh, Brick. Yeah, that's his name, Brick. But this was crazy because then they showed me a video on YouTube. Somebody recorded it, and there was a 10-minute concert. This has to be the first of its kind. You know, so imagine that. Like, the platform has really changed now from in-person concert to then a gaming, con- a gaming, a game, having a collaboration with an artist and actually performing a concert. Now, as far as optics and visually, it looks just like the game. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the, the the person had their little, the famous, I guess, outfit they usually wear. But it begs to ask the question, is this going to be the new wave? Is this going to be the new hookup now where um, games, let's say, for instance, it's um, NBA, no, 2K, and the NBA playoffs are around, and they want to do a live you know, I don't know, a halftime show, and it's actually an artist on the game performing. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is going to be crazy. About, like I say, what, it's Super Bowl Sunday right now, right? So what about if Madden was to come out and say, hey, put your you know, put your game in right now, halftime show, and we're going to have our own halftime show. And let's not worry about what the NFL says. We're going to just do it. So there's a lot of things to question about the thing about how musicians, artists can benefit from this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's another platform. It's another tour date, I guess, you can put on there as well. I'm not sure how much work, I'm sure a lot of work went into it. This was only a 10-minute concert, but it was, it really showed a piece of the future, like what's going to, what's what's to come. You know, um, I was very intrigued and very surprised by it, and my daughter was fanatic about it, and this is her generation, so I think for her generation, this is going to be the new norm, where the concert is not so much in, in live 3D, but it's live on your TV, and you're enjoying it. And who's to say, you know, of course, with augmented reality, 
that doesn't play into it. Also, um, you know, just other technologies come about that's going to make it feel more real. You know, um, it's, it's a little insane, a little crazy, but we are in the future. It's 2019. Who's to say within another three, four years that this video doesn't pop off and this is the new mainstay? So look out for that. Look out for things like that. It was really interesting to me to say that Fortnite had a concert. And I'm sure by the droves, by millions, people went to this concert. And it was kind of cool. You saw all these different people in their different skins walking around trying to party, whatever. There was one dude throwing um, tomatoes. And then they had beach balls they were play they were throwing around. They were You couldn't play the game itself, so you couldn't go kill other people. But as soon as the game was over, it was like a bloody murder after the concert. People were just jacking each other up. So, kind of cool. I really do like it. I do like the progression of how the next generation is thinking and how they're using technology to formulate that. Everyone always has questions and, and saying, hey, you know, human interaction is more important. And no doubt about it, there's a level to that. But we always had some some medium in between us, whether it was TV when it first came out that stopped you know, so-called kids from going outside to gaming, uh, to just the internet right now and, and binge watching on YouTube, Netflix, or Hulu, right? So those are things you have to really look out for. So I got to give it up. Shout out to Fortnite. I think it was a fantastic idea. I'm going to keep <laughs> my ear to the ground of my kids to see what else is coming out. And um, yeah, man, that's the Johnny Report. <laughs> Peace.